Salman Amir have a showdown. Katrina returns to Subash. Kangana's Parisian fashions. Asuraj and Ellie a couple. Hey guys, I'm Caitlin and I've got a great episode of 9xc.com, the show just for you. I'm hot, you're not. I'm a superstar. I'm a superstar. 9xc, 9xc, 9xc. Let's kick off the show with a story that will rock Bollywood to its very core. No, I am not exaggerating. I actually mean it because Salman Khan and Amir Khan have had a big, big showdown. Ago, Amir hosted a casual get together at his Bandra home in Mumbai, and among the guests was his friend Salman. The two indulged in casual talk until Amir decided to dissect Salman's career. He praised Salman's work in Bajrangi Bhaijan, but then suddenly changed tracks. A source told 9xc.com Amir told Salman that had he shown this kind of maturity at an early stage in his career, he would have had a lot of proud titles to look back upon. Salman was not happy with Amir's comment, but he kept his peace. Amir, however, was not done yet. There was more, so much more that he had to say. The source continued, Amir went on to tell Salman that it has been very easy for him in Bollywood. He doesn't have to worry about story or screenplay as the audiences lap up all his films, and he doesn't even work as hard as the other actors. And then Salman by Chisa Dakhi. He let out a volley of swear words. He even told Amir that he might not be as hardworking as him, but at least he has the decency to give credit to his writers and directors. Ouch. Now, was he referring to the Amol Gupte scenario in Tari Zameen Par? I mean, for those of you who came in late, Amir had ousted Amol after a certain part of the shoot was done and went on to direct the film himself. But before Amir could think of a comeback, Salman called him a fake. Imagine that. Or wo bhi char loko ke samne. And then tears started rolling down Amir's cheeks. Think of it. This showdown was long coming. Or Salman or Amir ke beach tensions bad rehte. Salman was not happy when Amir went around telling people that it was he who was first offered by Jangi Bhai Jan. And Amir did this during a party hosted by Salman. Recently, Amir, who is working on a wrestler film titled Dangal, tried to create hurdles in Salman's wrestler film, Sultan. Amir found out that Yashraj had planned to shoot Sultan in Haryana, the same place where he was going to shoot Dangal. Amir immediately called up Aditya Chopra and requested him to change the shooting venue. So, after their massive showdown, we hope the industry doesn't get divided into Salman camp and Amir camp, just like it did when Shah Rukh and Salman had an ugly brawl at Katrina's birthday party. But what do you guys think? Do you think that Amir was only advising Salman and that Salman should not have called Amir everything that he did? Or do you feel that it was none of Amir's business what Salman does with his career and Salman was justified in calling Amir out? Well, write to us on facebook.com slash 9xc and tweet to us at 9xc the show. Phew, now that's one big fight, but as they say, the show must go on. And we have our next piece for you guys. Karan Johar can't help but feel a sense of deja vu. Shruti has once again been put on hold, and frankly, we're losing track of how many times the film has been announced and delayed. Karan first announced the project with Hrithik Roshan and Karina Kapoor. And when they dropped out, Ranveer Singh and Deepika Padukone were summoned to take their place. However, when the duo chose Bajira Mastani over Shuddhi, Salman Khan came on board. But due to differences with Karan for being part of the AIB show, which insulted one of his family members, Salman chose not to do the film. Finally, Karan announced Shuddhi with his students Varun Dhawan and Alia Bhatt. The reason? Karan is being super cautious. You see, after the Malhotra-directed brothers didn't live up to expectations, buzz is that Kejo is being a little cautious before putting him back in the saddle with an expensive film. Shuddhi needs pots of money. We hear Malhotra is now working on a fresh subject for Kejo. 
And what will Varun and Alia do in the meantime? Well, they will be shooting for another Kajra production in that window, a Shashank Ketan film. Why let the dates go to waste, right? While a big film like Shuddhi has been put on hold, another massive project is right on track. We're now going to be talking about the Sanjay Dutt biopic. Ranbir Kapoor is set to play Sanjay in the biopic that will be directed by Rajkumar Hirani. The film script is complete, but Raju is still in two minds. Well, not about the script, but about what to title the film. 9xc.com has learned that the makers have liked two titles, Dutt and Baba. Dutt because that's Sanjay's surname, or Baba because Sanjay ko log pyaar se Baba bulate hain. Baba, 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 the duo will pick a name once Sanjay is back from jail. A source close to the Dutt family told 9xc.com, Manita is aware of both the titles. Hirani has been keeping the family in the loop. But she wants to leave the decision to Sanjay, though she likes Dutt more. Aapko kya lagta hai? Which title do you think will do the film more justice? Dutt or Baba? Tweet to us at 9xc the show or write to us on facebook.com slash 9xc with your choice. Now, next on our radar is a piece on Bollywood's current blue-eyed boy. Shai Kapoor is on a high. The actor is enjoying his status as a newlywed and he has a great looking film like Shandar coming up as well as the very promising Urta Punjab. But kya isi wajay se shayad kuch ziyada hawa mein hai? 9xc.com has exclusively learned that Shahid has left director Vikram Aditya Motwane hanging. Vikram Aditya had signed Shahid for his film AK vs SK. Now this is the same film that Saif Ali Khan turned down because he was unhappy with the script. So Vikram Aditya went to Shahid and he was fully on board until they actually began shooting. Shahid shot for a day but then suddenly did an about turn and asked the makers to delay the shoot. Now isn't that highly unprofessional? A source associated with the project told 9xc.com. Shahid's Rangoon look in which he sports a beard is interfering with Motwane's film. So now he has asked Motwane to push the project by three months. What? Why did Shahid even sign the film? Poor Vikram Aditya. First his film Bhavesh Joshi was put on hold, then Saif refused AK vs SK and now Shahid is asking him to wait for three months. Well, now that Shahid will be busy trimming his beard for the next three months, Vikram Aditya is putting his time to better use. He will soon begin filming a drama about human evolution with Rajkumar Rao. Coming up, Katrina's patch up with Subhash, Karan's shocking take on Shandar. Welcome back to 9xc.com the show, your source for the latest goss and news from Bollywood. So Katrina Kaif is busy facing the camera for her new and upcoming projects. And she's also working again with professional contacts like her old makeup artist Subhash Singh. That's right, her once was makeup artist is all set to become her now is makeup artist once again. 9xc.com exclusively has it that Katrina will resume working with Subhash from October 20th. They will be working together on the Nitya Mera directed film Bar Bar Deko in Scotland where Kat and Subhash will begin their second innings. In this film, Kat will share screen space with Siddharth Malhotra for the first time. Well, this is just another and hopefully the last addition to the Kachina Subhash saga that took a turn for the worse when Kat sacked Subhash, her makeup artist of 11 years, when he couldn't make the schedule for Jagga Jasus in time. A great change from when Subhash struck Katrina off the invitee list of his debut production, Chok and Duster. Anyway, all is well that ends well, and here's wishing Kat and Subhash a great working experience together. And after that, we have some shocking news from the Shandar front. The Alia Bhatt Shahid Kapoor star Shandar is definitely one of the most anticipated movies of the year and here's a scoop for you. Producer Karan Johar is in London shooting for A Dil Hai Mushkil aur unhone Shandar ki shooting chodi Vikas Bhel ke kabil haato mein. So now that the movie is shot, Vikas did his duty of flying down to London to show the movie to Karan. But what Karan told him after the screening must have really shocked Vikas. Karan felt that the movie has turned out to be a little bit too long and needs trimming by 12 to 15 minutes. He minced no words telling Vikas this and Vikas had to toe the line. Did he have a choice? 
Not really. Karen has more experience than him and is the producer of the film, so expertise is to be used and not wasted. Okay, but happy news time now. Let's discuss Gangana's fashion while she's in Paris, the capital of fashion for Paris Fashion Week. Gangana Renaud has been the talk of the town for a while now. She's known for her choice of strong roles, speaking her mind, and her fabulously great sense of style. And this has once again earned her a place in the front row at one of the most prestigious fashion events, Paris Fashion Week. Gangana attended Dior's show at Paris Fashion Week, and she was obviously wearing Dior haute couture. Gangana looks so insanely fashionable, it's almost unfair. The different patterns on her dress came together beautifully, and she had some beautiful gloves on. But, I mean, it's Dior, so how can it not look stunning? Let's not take this away from Kangana, she worked that look and how. Those shades were amazing and nothing less than a bold lip would have done justice to this look. Kangana really was the embodiment of Parisian chic. Coming up, 9xc.com's exclusive interview with Anmol and Mohit. Suraj spotted with Ellie at night spot. Welcome back to 9xc.com The Show. We still have more Bollywood goss and news for you. So EMI Records India returns with Lame, the single that you have been hearing exclusively on 9xm. Composed by Anu Malik, Lame is based off Coldplay's Paradise, sung by Anmol Malik and directed by Mohit Suri. Sizzling on screen together in the video are Mohit Marwa and Anmol. 9xc.com The Show caught up with the director Mohit and Anmol and got all there is to know about this cracker of a single. आपको कहीं ना कहीं मिलता है जिनके पास एक गाना होता है एक सुर होता है जिसको कहीं ना कहीं एक ओपन डोर नहीं मिल रहा है इस इंडस्ट्री में आने के लिए एंड आई थिंक दे जस्ट जेनुअली वेरी टैलेंटेड पीपल सो वेन देवराज एंड विनीत जो यूनिवर्सल म्यूजिक के हेड्स हैं वो मेरे पास आए और उन्होंने कहा था कि वी वॉन्ट टू स्टार्ट अ रिकॉर्ड लेबल वे वी लॉन्च एंड डेवलप न्यू टैलेंट and you're the best person to do it mujhe laga tha mere platter mein wohi aa gaya jo main hamesha karna chahta tha it's very exciting for a singer to explore a space a little outside your film industry uh, because what you're trying to see is the versatility in your own voice you're trying to see what else can your voice do uh, lamhe the song that uh, we've taken out as a single um, with emi records and the beautiful video that mohit sir has you know directed was a very long journey it was it started off with me wanting to explore the indie space a bit more we were trying to figure out who is it that we can you know ask who is god that craft that fine craft to be able to pen the lyrics so uh, it was my dad's idea to get uh, manoj sir manoj muttashir on it fantastic the lyrics they just magic the words that he came up with we were initially worried because it seemed like a very daunting task kaise karenge but the minute he sat on it he put his magic hand on it and these lyrics just floated and the lyrics are beautiful i'm so happy i don't i can't see anybody else uh, writing this song and doing justice to it so thank you manoj sir i heard the song first and i felt there was an international rendition but as person who's also lived indian music she's lived indian music because of her experience with her father and you cannot take away he's a part of history in indian music but similarly she had but she had the whole training of seeing another culture kind of culture so there was a there was a complete mix of everything that was there today so it was a song that i actually heard and i heard there were you know in more than it i remember the one thing i did essentially i mean i make alterations to every song but in this song i said push her voice higher in the lyrics not for anything else there is an attitude there is a personality in this voice which is very unique to her and that is what needs to be captured that is what the only addition i did to this song first time i heard that uh, mohit sir mohit suri himself is going to be directing this uh, video uh i was very very scared but i was also very excited the entire process of it was very overwhelming because he was very kind extremely kind and patient on set and hmm. it was a very short shoot but even in that little time i cannot tell you how much it played around with my mind i mean he was phenomenal on set so my dad's been actively involved in the process when he saw the final product i think he had tears in his eyes because uh, he it was a different feeling for him to see uh, me on screen and actually acting <laughs> i hope the tears were not because it was bad acting <laughs>
Moving on to our next story, we've seen Salman Khan's shirtless act in many of his films. The buff actor has happily shed his shirt in the name of art, but did you know that this shirtless act that Salman is now famous for actually happened by chance? Salman's shirtless song, Oh Oh Jane Jana, from Pyar Kiya To Darna Kya. Achha, oh Oh Jane Jana, that was by mistake. So I just started training at that point, on, you know, once again. So the previous jo schedule ke kapde the didn't fit. It was like a blouse type, ho gaya tha, you know, like very tight. So, so by that time, you know, the dress designer would go back to Bombay and, you know, get the, the, the clothes. Shaam ho jati, ek din waste ho jata. So I said, no, as it is, we are not shooting right now. Three, four shots, take it. Well, bare-chested case, you're mad, brother, how can you do this? Bare-chested Ghana. So he put a headphone on the other side, Michael Jackson type. At that time, he came out with a new one. Then the guitar came out of the hand. So he said, this is looking fine, so let's go ahead with this. So that was by default. If the clothes fit, then the song doesn't get to see the bare-chested song. Well, what began by chance created a revolution and now even debutants who are launched under Salman have taken up the practice. Moving on to our next story, Suraj Pancholi didn't create a big buzz with his debut film Hero, but perhaps he knows that he needs to be seen around. And he was seen around. Last Friday, Aditya Pancholi and Zarina Wahab's son was spotted cozying up to a lady friend. And who was she? Well, it was none other than Ali Avram. Suraj and Ellie were spotted at the popular Bollywood night spot Olive and giving them company was Krishika Lulla, wife of Eros International's head honcho Sunil Lulla. Krishika left after a while but Suraj and Ellie were inseparable through the night. 9xc.com has it that the two made their way to restauranteur Timi Narang's residence to party till the wee hours. Well, Suraj and Ellie definitely believe in painting the town red. And how do Suraj and Ellie know each other you ask? Well, dono ka Salman bhai ke saad bhari connection hai. Salman launched Suraj, and as for Ellie, well, Salman was all but enamoured by her during Big Boss 7, wasn't he? And with that, we move on to Atiya Shetty, the pretty lady who settled in a world of her own making. So yeah, Hero wasn't the kind of blockbuster that everyone expected, but everyone knows that Bollywood mein har jeet to hoti rehti hai. But what Atiya Shetty recently said about the movie and her performance made us fall off our chairs. When asked about the flack that the movie got, this is what Atya had to say. Um, you can't please everybody. I'm extremely happy with the feedback I've gotten, with, that the film has gotten. Um, I truly believe you can't um, make everybody happy. I think we are all happy. And it's my first film, so I have a lot to learn. And um, with time comes experience. Uh, this is what the film critic Raja Sen had to say about Hero. This is a poorly written film where the kids don't seem to have any true allegiance to the parental figures or any consistent morality or conflict even. Whereas Shubhra Gupta of the Indian Express had this to say. The end of the Suraj Pancholi Atya Shetty film brings relief, with Salubai working the end credits, exuding more star power in two minutes than we've seen in two hours. This hero is a zero. Well, wonder how this kind of feedback makes you happy, Atya. That's not all, Raja Sen had this to write about Atya's acting skills. Sunil Shetty's daughter Atya plays her part with the infuriatingly wide-eyed naivete of an early 90s heroine, plus a voice as screechingly high-pitched as a dog whistle. But when asked about the negative reviews that plagued her acting, Atya had this to say. Oh, uh, was it? I haven't heard anything. Kaise nahi suna Atya? Sari dunya ne to bol diya. Well, seems Sunil Shetty's daughter Atya might have to learn how to handle the failure of films. And that's all we have for you in this episode of your favorite Bollywood news show. But don't forget to download our apps for the iOS and the Android to keep in touch with everything Bollywood. Visit our website 9xc.com to get the latest Bollywood news and visit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash 9xc and Twitter at 9xc the show. You can also view our entire episodes on YouTube. And that's all I have for you guys for today, but I will see you on Friday.